best Need for Speed game ever. Gonna get that shit out of the way early. It's like telling a YouTube auditor to go fuck himself. <laughs> but there is no debate about what is the best Need for Speed game. This is it. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is sort of a remake of the old series back on PlayStation 2. And I must say, the enjoyment I got from this game ranks right up there with all the fun games that I've played over the years. Background on this game first, yesterday's video mentioned how much I hated Pro Street to the point I walked away from the Need for Speed franchise because I was tired of the bullshit. I didn't buy any Need for Speed game after that one because it started to become extraordinarily stale. However, EA announced that Criterion will be developing this game instead of Black Box or Slightly Mad who made the Shift series which was pretty decent but I didn't buy those motherfuckers. I knew Criterion from the Burnout series on PlayStation 2 and I think I might have played one or two of those games back in the day but I can't quite remember which ones. Ah, whatever the fuck. But when they announced this game they were bringing back cop chases. Now before Need for Speed went the whole Fast and Furious route with that stupid ass storyline they had done a few Hot Pursuit games back on PlayStation 2 and I love playing those. I love being in a cop car and kicking the shit out of racers. So right off the bat my favorite game type cop chases was coming back a new studio that wasn't black box was making the game and it was being released the year that black ops 1 was coming out so my interest immediately peaked for this game <laughs> on top of that the cheesy as fuck storylines were removed from the game no more douchebag named coyote no more stereotypical bimbo just waiting for you to fuck her in the ass no more douchey asian kid in the civic or skyline taunting you about how you race and how this import of cars result of human trafficking <laughs> They got all that shit out of the game, although on a side note, Criterion mentioned that they initially planned on having a storyline involved in this game. Thankfully, they came to their senses and decided this game should focus on racing and not the bullshit storylines that sounded like they were more of an episode of Beverly Hills 90210 in this motherfucker. Because after all, if you look at the best-selling racing franchise, Gran Turismo, they have no storyline. It's essentially just a series of races of you against the computer advancing with each win. So the simplest concept of letting the driving do the talking is the best idea when it comes to racing games. Before this game was released, EA did the smart thing and they released a free demo of the game for people to play for a little while. After playing the demo, I knew this was a definite purchase for me and I went out and I got this game day one and I played it immediately. You guys saw plenty of videos of me on my channel from races to my first curse free commentary video to the pure road rage videos. Criterion struck gold with this game and the ability to play online as a cop or racer or do eight man races against each other without cops, that was fun as fuck. In addition to the cop chases and whatnot, the game also had speed walls, which is sort of like a leaderboard across all the races and events and shit like that. For example, if I want to race in three minutes and someone passed me at two minutes and 58 seconds, then the game would notify you that someone beat your time. If you did a cop chase and arrested the drivers in 45 seconds and someone did it in 40 seconds, the game would notify you that somebody took your top time. Each event and race had a leaderboard and your friends or whoever the fuck played on it, all their times were on that list for you to beat. At one point, I was the leader on my friends list in every single race event, every single one. The cop events, I didn't have maybe about four or five of those top times. But, you know, a lot of the things that had to do with the cop events was someone getting lucky and having the AI drive in traffic or getting a lucky arrest or some shit like that. You know, I got my share of lucky arrest as well, but in all the events in which I didn't have a top time, the majority of people that beat me were because they got lucky wins with the computer crashing out or whatever the fuck. But in all the race events, I had the top times at one point. Now, going after speed walls and beating your friends in those times made this game addicting. However, one very small downside that people found out was that in order to pass the top speed wall times on your friends list, you needed to be logged in at the time you finished that race in order to get credit for the fastest time. See, each event can be done offline perfectly fine. You didn't need to be logged in to access the events of the game, but if you happen to get a great time on the speed wall while offline, that would not post to all your friends' speed walls. So, let's take the three minute example race for a second. I decided to play that race offline for whatever the fuck reason, and I run that race in two minutes and 50 seconds, completely blowing away all the fastest time. Because I did that offline, my time will not post to all my friends' list speed walls. My time will still show as three minutes. My personal speed wall, the one that only I can see, that one will show my best time. That one will show my offline times, including my two minute and 50 second run. But my online speed walls will not have that. I will not have the 250. Even if I log in after the fact, it will not take it. I had to have beaten that race when I was logged in. And that kind of sucked because three of those cop events I completed with the best time offline. And I was just looking through all my speed walls and I do have the best times in those cop events, but I must have been offline because obviously the shits didn't count on this motherfucker. But in any event, the game's four years old. I kicked the shit out of everyone. We'll just call it a day. <laughs> 
But obviously the best part of this game was online and playing against other people online. Beating up the AI is fun and all, but competing against real humans is the challenge of this game. And as I posted plenty of times, the two game modes are the eight man races where there's no cop and the four versus four modes where cops versus racers and shit like that. Racing modes, I pretty much dominated that. It's not that I'm a great driver, a great racer, but I knew the tracks. I knew which cars performed better than others. I knew all the shortcuts and I knew how to fuck with other drivers to make sure that they didn't get ahead of me when it came to the races. Anytime you were a racer, the trick was simple. Get the fuck out in front. I said that at the start of almost every video. If you're not a cop, get to the front of pack and let the action take place behind you. As a cop, that was the main challenge of trying to capture and defeat people. And that was the hardest part of the game. Part of the problem is that the cops needed more teamwork than the racers. If you're a racer, there's no real strategy other than to drive straight and use any weapons you need to get by. Jammers, spike strips, whatever the fuck. As a cop, there's a certain element of teamwork involved, in which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But one of the few beasts that I had with the game was the lack of a true party system. I don't know what the logic was behind this decision, but you couldn't really party up with people on the same side as your friends. Many of you guys saw that going poster would be in my room. Sometimes we ended up on the same team, sometimes we ended up opposed each other, but that was because the lobbies would randomize what side you would be on. Sometimes you got on the same team as your friends, sometimes you didn't. But you couldn't get a true party of four people together on the same team. I know Criterion rolled out something later down the line where you could finally party up or whatever the fuck it is, but even then, it would still randomize your teammate. It was fucking annoying. Me and Going Postal had the ultimate cop strategy. So when we ended up on the same team as cops, there was a good chance we were going to win. When we ended up as racers, there was a good chance at least one of us was going to survive to the end. Usually both of us did it because we knew how to avoid these motherfuckers. Although, I'm the better racer than him. He's the better cop car than me. <laughs> he won't agree to that, but fuck it. I have the video proofs that show that shit. But in any event, on opposing sides, it was a crapshoot between me and him. He knew my strategies. I knew his strategies. As a cop, he knew to come after me. As a cop, I knew I had to go after him. And although we never talked about the strategy on my channel, about some of our tricks and shit like that, one of the worst things to do was to assume that one cop should go after one racer. You figure, okay, it's a four on four, one cop goes after one racer, we call it a day. Not gonna happen. On top of this game being a clusterfuck where you can't predict what will happen, we developed the idea of teaming up against the lead racer. If we were both cops, our goal was to go after whoever was in first place at the time and sandwich him in between us so that we'd constantly hit him and pound away. One would stay in the front, one would stay behind, and basically you become a battering ram, making sure that nobody else advances while you're doing this. Usually, within 30 to 45 seconds, we could take out a full health car. We were that good when we worked together as a team. After we took out the person who was in first place, then we would focus on the person who was now in first place after we eliminated the first guy, hoping that whoever else was in a cop with us in the room was doing some sort of damage to the other cars. You know, for the most part, as cops, we certainly won more events than we lost together. But we we knew how to use teamwork, but without a true party system, we can never guarantee that we will be teammates, which was a pain in the ass. The only other thing that ticked me off about the online portion was that some of the maps were ridiculously uneven. For example, there were events that were extremely short, say like four miles long or some shit like that. And then there were events that stretched 14 miles long. The shorter maps were much more in favor of the racers because of the short distance you needed to travel in order to survive. You can get there pretty quickly and you can get there without taking too much damage. The longer races benefited police cars because the longer the race would go, the better chance you had at damaging their vehicles over time or the better chance they had of damaging their own vehicle. You know, if a racer crashed, that lowered the health of their ride. So in a 14 mile race, that means there was more terrain for them to fuck their shit up compared to a four mile run. That was unbalanced. Now granted, cop cars could also damage their cars, but for the most part for a racer, you did not want to be a racer on a 14 mile track. You wanted to be a racer on a four mile track. There was a big fucking difference. Now for me personally, I didn't mind either distance because as a racer, I knew chances of someone catching me were slim to none. But as a cop, I did not want to be on the shorter courses. The longer courses, there was a better chance that I would have players worrying themselves out where I could make the bus easier for myself. But then again, that was a minor point. The fact that those tracks were so unbalanced was one of the biggest pain in the ass things that you had to do online. But overall, the fact that this game came out in the year Black Ops was out was a huge relief to me because it gave me something else to play besides that garbage. You know, I had months to play this game and I enjoyed it online and the campaign to the tune of being another one of my platinum trophies that I earned. I don't know which platinum trophy it was, whether it was my fourth or my fifth or my third, whatever the fuck it is, but I earned a platinum trophy on this game because it was so damn fun to play. Is it realistic as Gran Turismo? Hell fucking no. No Need for Speed game really is. It's an excellent game that should have received a fucking sequel or whatever the fuck, but who knows what the fuck EA does with their decision making. <laughs> 
Oh man, of all the racing games, this one has been ignored for years, so I'm hoping at some point, whether it's Criterion or there's new Studio Ghost, they come back and they bring back a sequel to this game, because obviously this game desperately needs it, and then EA wonders why people fucking hate them. <laughs> Anyways, that does it for one of my favorite racing games of all time. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video.